right, here I have a little bit different view. Um, I have a parametric equation again that I want to write in rectangular form, which means I need to remove this parameter t. Um, but notice I have cosines and sines, and if I tried to solve one of these equations for t, I would have to use the inverse, which makes it pretty ugly. <laughs> okay, I would have to do the arc cosine or inverse cosine of both sides to solve for t here, and I would get that t is equal to the arc cosine of x. If I substitute that in here, I get y equals 4 times the arc cosine of x, which is not very pretty. It's not one we are used to graphing a lot. So rather than doing that, what we're going to do instead is use what we know about polar graphs, what we know about trig identities. Trig identities, we know that cosine squared plus sine squared equals what? What does cosine squared plus sine squared equal from our identities? It equals 1. So if we could make this a cosine squared and a sine squared, okay, and add them together, that would remove our parameter. And that is really the best method to use when you have cosine and sine involved. To do that, with this one here, I have just cosine t on this side. So if I square both sides, that gives me x squared equals cosine squared t. That one is done. I have a cosine squared. That's what I was going for. Over here, um, I could either square both sides first. Let's try that. So if I square this side and I square this side, I get y squared equals we would have to square the 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Sine squared t. Now notice if I add these together, my goal was to add the two equations together. Okay, Since y squared is equal to 16 sine squared t, they're equivalent values. So adding 16 sine squared t to this side is the same as adding y squared to this side. But notice that would not give me my cosine squared plus sine squared that I wanted because I have a 16 here. So we're going to do a little more work. I'm going to divide by 16 so that I just have sine squared on that side. Okay. Now I have sine squared t equals y squared over 16. And now what I'm going to do is add the two equations. Again, this is because if x squared is equal to cosine squared t, the rule says if you add something to one side, you have to add the equivalent to the opposite side of the equation. So that's what we're doing. We're adding an x squared here, and it's equivalent cosine squared t over here. We have followed the rules of algebra, so we're just fine, and it gave us what we wanted. Okay, so you can see the, the tactics are a little different when you are dealing with sines and cosines and you're trying to remove those parameters. Over here I have sine squared plus cosine squared, but and we know from our identities that's equal to 1. Over here I have x squared plus y squared over 16, which is the standard form for the equation of, do you know what that's the equation of? <laughs> that's the equation for an ellipse. Okay, so we have done our job. We removed the parameters and found the equivalent rectangular um, equation. So this is a trick you may try if you're trying to remove the parameters and you have sine and cosine involved. We're going to do one more of those that comes out a little bit differently. Okay, so again, we're asked to remove the parameters and find the equivalent rectangular equation, which means get rid of those t's, just have x's and y's left. Again, we notice we have cosine t's cosine t and sine t. So we're going to try to get cosine squared plus sine squared so that we can write that as a 1 and not have the t's there. To accomplish that goal, I need a cosine squared and I need a sine squared, and right now they're not squared. Okay. Now this one works out a little bit differently. I, I do the same thing to get a cosine squared. I'm going to have to square it, so I just square both sides. Now notice the other option would be to multiply both sides by cosine, um, but that would give me a cosine over here and that would not be good. So we square both sides. Don't forget to square 
both parts. This was 5 times cosine t squared, so we get 5 squared or 25 cosine squared t. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to square both sides so that we have a sine squared, and that gives me y squared equals 25 sine squared t. Now let's stop and evaluate what we have here. We want to end up with a cosine squared plus a sine squared. Okay, so what we want to do is add x squared to this side. It's equivalent 25 cosine squared to this side. Um, would I have a problem there? Notice they both have a coefficient of 25. So that's not as big of a problem as on our previous, we'll go back to it, our previous question, one of them was just cosine squared and the other one was 16 sine. So that was a problem. I needed just sine and cosine. On this one, we can see it's working out a bit differently. I can use the same tactic, okay? Um, our rule says if you add equivalent things to both sides of an equation, it keeps its balance. x squared is equal to 25 cosine squared t. So if I add x squared on this side, I can add 25 cosine squared t to this side, and it will stay balanced because those are equivalent values, okay? So over here, I get x squared plus y squared. On this side, I get 25 sine squared t plus 25 cosine squared t. Notice I don't have my cosine squared plus sine squared that I wanted, but I can, since they're both 25, I can factor out 25, and that will give me sine squared plus cosine squared which we know from our identities is equal to 1. So I get x squared plus y squared equals 25 times 1, which would be just x squared plus y squared equals 25. And this is the standard form of the equation of a circle centered at 0 with a radius of 5. And you can always double check and graph your parametric equations, graph your resulting equation, and just make sure that they actually match up.